Automated house values have become a comfortable source for people mostly because they're assuming the computer has figured out all that really matters. It can actually be quite overwhelming to make sense of all the numbers and statistics out there. Unfortunately, the computer generated value has missing information. But what I'm going to do today is show you a process and give you a new source to take the stress out of this process. Welcome to my consultation series. The purpose of this video series is to share with you some ideas to consider when buying and selling a home, and also to show you how I get the job done. My name is David Thomas, and I help people secure the best opportunities in buying and selling real estate. I truly appreciate the opportunity to share this information with you and look forward to earning your business. Enjoy the show. Now by definition, an appraisal is nothing more than an opinion of value from one person at one moment of time, that moment that they actually put the report together. And the emphasis here is on the word opinion. And now would be a real good time to remind you that every situation is different and one size absolutely does not fit all. So if you're concerned about the value of a property, then you must call me or another qualified professional to assist with your needs. Now what we want is an opinion of value which is backed by reasonable facts. And these facts come in the form of comparable properties. A comparable property is a property which is similar to the house being appraised. And what we're looking for is that property's twin. But we often need to make adjustments to come to that you know, final value. Now we've all lived in homes our entire lives. And we're intimately aware of homes' various features and the different neighborhoods and how the concept of value changes when these features, you know, vary. But in a formal appraisal, there are actually guidelines to further narrow down a comparable property to a very narrow range and even to an, a definite suggested opinion, remember, opinion of price. First and foremost, you need an accurate source of information. And there's no choice in this unless you have a real estate license and can access the multiple listing service on your own, you're going to need to go to listingbook.com. You need information that is accurate and up to date. And on listingbook, you can generate reports from active, pending, even sold listings. You can gather information from a certain time period, houses that have sold within the last 120 days or even the last two years. You can search by square footage, number of bedrooms, if they have a pool, how many levels a home has, it goes on and on. There is no way to compare this resource to what people are using right now on the internet. And the other thing is, it is absolutely free. There's no comparison to the benefits with listingbook.com. Here are some areas to look for and similarities between comparable properties. You want to look at the square footage and generally you want to stay within 100 square feet of your subject or the house that you're trying to appraise. So if it's 1,500 square feet, you want to be between 1,400 and 1,600 square feet would be your comparables, ideally. You're looking for the number of bedrooms, bathrooms, garage, view. If the house has a view compared to a house that doesn't have a view, that plays into it. The size of the lot, the year that it's built, the distance from the subject property. Generally, you want to stay within a mile radius of the subject property. You want to be aware of what neighborhoods you're dipping into. So if you find a house that's within a mile, but it's an obviously a different neighborhood, then that's not a reasonable, you know, comparable as well. You're concerned about the condition of the properties you're comparing against and any upgrades to the structure or improvements to the property. We also want to be aware of when the property was sold. There's no sense in using a comparable that's perfect in every feature of the home, but it was sold five years ago. So you want it to be very recent. We look for properties that are within 90 days and then we, if we have to go back, but when we start to get into a point and it's arguable, different people have different opinions on this, but when you get to a certain point where it's too old, then we start looking for different ways to make adjustments. And also how many levels of the home. A house that has two levels is not a perfect comparable to a house with one level. And again, we always can make adjustments for these things because sometimes you can't find a house that is 1,500 square feet right in the same neighborhood with the same number of bedrooms and bathrooms, two car garage, the same size lot, and it's also a ranch style home. And so this is why we need to make adjustments. 
If you're interested in a copy of my house appraisal template to help with this process, just give me a call or email me. I'm happy to send it out to you. Now, when it comes to making adjustments, you have an opportunity here as far as I'm concerned. And I recommend tracking properties for several months before actually buying or selling a house because tracking a property provides two benefits. One, you can actually see the trends in the local market. And two, you have the opportunity to see active listings before they actually sell. See, getting into an active listing helps you to get that tangible evidence of value and provide clarity as you're making these adjustments. You can't go see a property after it sells. I mean, that's an awkward conversation, right, with the new homeowner? But when it sells, you get the description of the property, you get the facts, you get the pictures, and unfortunately, that's just not enough information. We're always looking for more. There's a strong benefit, especially when you're doing your adjustments, to having been in the homes when they were actually active. And I find that if you have even three to six months, that's enough time to get out there and see the comparable properties while they're still active before you actually use those same properties as your comparable. So here's a couple mistakes that people make when they're, you know, appraising a property. And there are also mistakes, quite honestly, that realtors will complain about the appraisers as they appraise their properties. And uh, one is pulling from neighborhoods which really are not comparable, even though they're within the permitted distance. We complain about that one all the time. Another mistake is not starting with a large enough uh, number of homes before starting to make those cuts. And one way people do this is by starting their search by limiting the number of homes that have the same number of bedrooms. They just assume that if they're going to do an appraisal on a property and they're looking from comparables, then they're going to want to start with the same number of bedrooms. But the fact of the matter is we need to allow room for adjustments. And if we start eliminating opportunities too soon, we miss that opportunity to find a really nice comparable property where we can just make a little adjustment for that fourth bedroom. It's a lot easier than trying to, you know, recreate the whole value out of thin air. And so we don't want to make these cuts too soon. Finally, some homes are just very difficult to appraise. And some people decide just to kind of go with the information they have. And obviously, that's a recipe for loss. And to that, I want to just mention there are other means of appraisal than the one I'm going over right now. And you just got to know that there's just more to this than what I can go into in a, in a video. But the end result is that you want your appraised value to make sense and you want it to be justifiable. But if you're serious about a home's value, then you really need to talk to a professional. You know, otherwise you'd be acting like a person who's trying to treat their symptoms through a video recording of a doctor who's never seen them before. It's just kind of crazy. The best takeaway from this video is to start using the source listingbook.com. There's no comparison in its accuracy of market data and its ability to search it. It's a free resource, so why deprive yourself of it, you know? Thanks for watching. I do this every day, guys. I sit down at my computer and I search and I track and I follow up and I get the job done. If you do not already have a copy of my book, How to Buy and Sell Real Estate, just send me an email and I'll get you a copy of that right away. And until then, I'm just happy to be that resource and thanks again for watching.